Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. We will have an official one minute countdown, but I'll just let you know that Chief Mark Saunders will be speaking today, as well as Superintendent Dominic Sinopoli from Professional Standards, and they'll be speaking about the anti corruption investigation. Mark Saunders is spelled M A R K S A U N D E R S, and Superintendent Dominic Sinopoli is D. O M E N I C S I N O P O L I. Thank you. Today's news conference will begin in one minute. Thirty seconds. Twenty. Ten. Five. Good morning and thank you for joining us today. My name is Constable Carolyn DeClute and I'm here today to introduce Chief Mark Saunders and Superintendent Dominic Sinopoli of Professional Standards. They will be providing an update on an anti-corruption investigation. Thanks Carolyn and good morning. The Toronto Police Service is dedicated to keeping our city safe and arresting those who commit crimes that impact the safety of the members of the public. Integrity and transparency are key to public trust for us in this service, and we are always striving to strengthen our relationships with the communities that we serve. Each member of the Toronto Police Service is held accountable to meeting that public trust. Today we are announcing the latest update of what has been a 10-month long investigation led by our Professional Standards Unit. This anti-corruption investigation has resulted in more than 50 charges against 11 individuals one of whom is a member of the Toronto Police Service. This officer faces multiple charges for his alleged role in this investigation. We further allege that each of the arrested individuals have been involved in organized crime and have links to tow truck industries. This investigation is a result of the thorough work by our professional standards unit and also highlights the efforts of multiple other units across the service. I'd also like to thank our colleagues at the York Regional Police Service as well as the Ontario Police um, service uh, for their great assistance. And now I would like to ask Superintendent Dom Sinopoli of the Professional Standards Unit to speak on this investigation. Thank you, Chief. Good morning. I wanted to begin by taking you through an investigation that was commenced in August of last year. At the time, Investigators from Professional Standards initiated an investigation into the theft of TPS encrypted radios. As the investigation took on some life, 
the corruption revealed itself. What we learned was a consortium of tow truck drivers were in possession of stolen police radios and were utilizing the encrypted transmissions to facilitate their business interests. The transmissions were broadcasted to other tow truck drivers for a fee through the use of an internet-based app. The consortium operated mainly in 22, 13, and 32 divisional boundaries. One police officer was responsible for the theft of a police radio, which was then provided to the said consortium. The stolen radio was cloned and put back into TPS circulation. The same officer, operating out of 22 division, was receiving monetary compensation for informing the said group on accident locations. The same officer was also operating a car rental agency and owned two tow trucks, which were then being operated by members of the group. The officer would receive monetary compensation for the tow trucks. He would receive kickbacks for the tips he provided, and he would receive referrals to his car rental agency. As part of the general investigation, on Saturday, May 9th of this year, investigators stopped an involved tow truck driver who was driving dangerously along Highway 400. At the time, a TPS radio was seized from him during this vehicle stop. At the time, Kevin Lima, 27, of Barrie, Ontario, was charged with dangerous driving and was released at the scene. The investigation into this particular radio revealed that at the time of inquiry, there was currently a radio at 22 Division bearing the same identification. Investigators attended 22 Division and retrieved the said radio, which when examined by our technicians at Telecom, revealed that it was a cloned version of the radio seized from Mr. Kevin Lima. What this illustrates is, is that the tow operator had a genuine TPS radio in his possession while our officers were using, using a cloned version. On Tuesday, May 26th of this year, investigators executed residential search warrants at an address in Brampton, one in Barrie, and one in Toronto. During the course of these search warrants, investigators recovered at least one Toronto Police Service radio, which was reported lost or stolen from 14 Division. Investigators also seized numerous radios and radio parts belonging to a variety of different organizations. As well, they seized parts that were being used for cloning purposes. On Tuesday, June 9th, three involved tow truck drivers in a single motor vehicle attended the parking lot situated at 100 Billy Bishop Way here in Toronto. With the assistance of the York Regional Police Service, three involved tow truck drivers were arrested and seized from the vehicle was a Toronto Police radio and a loaded 9mm handgun. Arrested were Kevin Lima, 27 of Barrie, Jacob Villeneuve Portella, 21 of Toronto, Giuseppe Carfora, 27 of Toronto. All three accused were jointly charged with firearm related offenses and possession of the stolen radio. Kevin Lima was further charged with one count of failing to comply with his probation. And Giuseppe Carfora, who at the time was also the subject of a separate but simultaneous drug trafficking investigation, was further charged with um, numerous drug related charges. On Monday, June 15th of this year, investigators arrested and charged a Toronto Police Service member, Constable Ronald Joseph, 47 of Toronto. At the time, he was charged with one count of breach of trust and one count of theft over, and this was in relation to the radio that was seized from Mr. Kevin Lima on May 9th. On Thursday, June 18th of this year, Investigators executed search warrants at five residential premises and then on seven commercial premises. The search warrants were executed throughout southern and northern Ontario and in the greater Toronto area. At the time, 11 persons, including Constable Ronald Joseph, was taken into custody and they all stand charged with various criminal code 
corruption-related offenses, as well as criminal organization-related offenses. Court for all involved members is scheduled for September 4th, this year at 11 a.m. at Old City Hall. The search warrants resulted in the seizures of $35,000 in cash and the seizures of six tow trucks belonging to three different companies. Before taking questions, I wanted to echo the sentiments of the chief. I want to thank Inspector Brett Nickel and his team of dedicated officers for their commitment to the highest standards of the Toronto Police Service. I also wanted to express my gratitude for the assistance and the commitment of various units within our organization that assisted in this highly se sensitive and complicated investigation. Lastly, our sincere thank you to the York Regional Police Service and to the OPP for their assistance and support throughout this investigation. Happy to take questions. Are there any questions at this time? Go ahead, Haley Cooper from News Talk 1010. Thank you. Um, I'm just curious, uh, through your investigation, has anything been uncovered as to the relationship between Constable Joseph and, and the other individuals that are facing charges? Yes, they are jointly charged with participating in a criminal organization. No, I understand that. What is his relationship or alleged relationship with all these other people that have been arrested? Um, at this point, it would appear to be a business relationship uh, with one particular uh, individual, that being Mr. Kevin Lima, and that relationship was extended to other members of the uh, group. Molly Hayes, Globe and Mail, go ahead with your question. Thanks, Colin. Um, I'm hoping you can speak a little bit to kind of what this says about how deep-rooted corruption is in the towing industry. Um, you know, this is something I've, I've been working on for months, and, um, you know, it, it's evident that fraud is uh, rife, or this industry is rife with fraud and, and kickbacks, but um, this is the first we're, we're hearing of police involvement in Toronto. Um, we know police have been charged in Ottawa earlier this year, but what does this say about kind of the state of this industry? Well, I do uh, agree with you that the industry is rife with corruption. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that all tow truck drivers are corrupt. What this means is that there's certain individuals that are taking advantage of the system and the opportunities available to them to facilitate their best uh, or their business interests. I'm not sure if I'm answering the question for you. I guess, you know, in basic terms, how, how concerned are you about this? With respect to the towing industry, I, I, I can't say that I'm a uh, subject matter expert with regards to the towing industry. This is an investigation that began on our end from professional standards uh, because of the involvement of a uh, police officer. As a result of that investigation, it was the towing industry that was dragged into our investigation. Right. I guess, sorry, maybe my, my question was not worded properly. How concerned are you that there may be more police involved in this, especially when you say there are other radios, um, you know, that, that you maybe haven't linked to services yet? How, how deep uh, are, are you concerned this might go? Is this um, a one-off or is this, is this a bigger problem? I can't speculate on whether it is or it isn't the one-off. I mean, I'm concerned about the fact that we have police radios in circulation. That is concerning. Um, uh -huh. But as far as the team of investigators are concerned, they will simply go where the evidence takes them. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Adrian Humphreys, National Post, go ahead with your question. Uh, yes, hi. Um, can You mentioned, uh, I think the Chief mentioned specifically that uh, the individuals were involved in organized crime. What can um, you tell us about that specific aspect in terms of uh, describing the nature of the organized crime uh, the flavor of it, etc. Well, what I can tell you is that Constable uh, Ron Joseph used his position as a Toronto police officer to facilitate the commission of other substantive offenses. He used his um, position to steal and transfer a police radio that would give advantage 
to the group with respect to the ability to intercept police communications, attend more accidents, or perhaps evade police detection. He used his position um, to provide insider knowledge to the group and that these uh, tips, for lack of a better word, resulted in monetary benefit for the group. The, um, and just to follow up, if I may, um, the, the organized crime, uh, the organization alleged here is the organization then the towing cartel that was making use of this officer's um, the tips and equipment, or is there a larger organization they are linked to beyond that? I, I can't speculate on whether or not there is a larger organization behind that. I can tell you that the officer um, with um, a select group of individuals, all of whom stand charged with him, uh, formed the criminal organization that we are revealing today. Uh, while I'm active, may I ask a, a second, another question? Certainly. Uh, maybe for the chief, uh, other than reactive policing, what might be done to crack down on what is clearly becoming a hugely problematic industry? Um, so thank you for the question. So it, it's, it's not just up to the Toronto Police Service. I think what we have to have is a multi-layered approach involving uh, the different layers of government and also looking at the reg regulatory processes that exist, uh, seeing where those gaps are, and then figuring out what steps and stages need to be combined in order to reduce uh, the gaps to the best of the ability. And I just want to uh, preface again that all of these things are allegations at this point in time, and as uh, Superintendent Sinopoli said, uh, it is on going in a sense and, and we'll do everything we can especially internally to see what gaps may exist within our organization and, and tighten up on those uh, as we identify them. Haley Cooper, News Talk 1010, go ahead with your follow-up. Thank you. I'm just wondering what the protocols and procedures are surrounding uh, police radios. Do officers go home with those radios? every night or do they have to sign them out when they arrive for shift? Uh, no, typically officers don't go home with them. Um, the procedure stipulates that when an officer um, is going to be taking out a radio, uh, the radio is to be uh, signed out um, and then when the officer returns the radio, the radio is signed back into uh, the database. And w included in the allegations, do we know how much money uh, Constable Joseph allegedly made from, from this operation? I, I don't have that information, no. Molly Hayes, Globe and Mail, go ahead with your follow-up. Sure, thanks. Um, you mentioned that uh, Constable Joseph had a car rental agency and owned two tow trucks. Is this something the service was aware of, or is this something that you learned through this investigation? I know the service was not aware of the tow trucks. I think there's some information that the service was aware of the car rental agency. At the time, it did not appear to be a conflict of interest, but uh, because, of the converse, or because of the investigation, um, the conflict uh, made itself noticeable. Okay, thanks. Perfect. That concludes the session of questions. Yes, today that concludes our news conference.